My name is Keelan Barr and I'm a data journalist at The Guardian in London. Um, I've worked there for the past two years and I work on the data projects team where we typically do longer form investigative work using data. My typical work day to day has, you know, I'll have short and longer term projects and as a team we work with people across the newsroom. So we'll generally work with the specialists, so people who work in economics or health or education or social affairs and we'll develop projects with them in lines of what, you know, what the big stories of the day or the month are. Um, so on a daily basis we might be asked to do kind of quick turnaround work based on daily statistical releases or if there's a big government report that comes out. But typically the work that we do where we really add value in the newsroom is the longer term work. So where we really get to sit with the specialists and work on a, a collaborative project with them. And that's usually over weeks or months. So the longest project I've worked on at The Guardian was over nine months. But that is, that's quite an extreme case. And at the same time, we'll always have you know, short, medium and long term projects on. So very often with the longer term projects, you'll get something started and you'll either be waiting to know what the next step should be from the reporter going out into the field and coming back with new information or waiting for a government department to come back with a response. And in the meantime, we're working on shorter and long-term projects. We do work with other newsrooms. Um, there's very much a spirit of kind of collaboration within the data journalism community. And I think within the investigative community as well, that's growing. Um, so there's this idea that, you know, that very often the groups that we're looking at or the people that we're investigating work cross borders. So why shouldn't journalists? And also newsrooms are kind of pressed for money and resources. So, you know, there, there may be a story that The Guardian can make best use of um, in terms of its audience in the UK, in the US, in Australia and elsewhere. But we're always open to collaborating with other news organisations where if we can make, you know, jointly make a bigger impact in different countries, then that's something we're always open to doing as well. In my day-to-day -day work, I tend to use Excel every single day. Um, but I work increasingly with text as well, so I use a lot of text editors, my favorite sublime text. Um, for longer term work, then we're kind of looking at things like SQL, um, when they're you know, bigger kind of databases that we're trying to join and do any analysis on. I do program a bit. Um, I work in R and R Studio, and I teach um, R Studio as well. Um, and I find that really useful because it helps, you know, you can do the analysis and get, you can scrape with it, you can um, pull XML feed in with R. And um, structuring is really good within R as well and doing basic visuals. So by no means am I a visual developer. Um, we have people who are fantastic at that in our newsroom. But being able to do basic visuals where I can bring it to a reporter or bring it to an editor to help explain the idea of a story is really, really useful. My approach to data journalism is using the tools that get the job done. So I may you know, use Excel or SQL or R on a day-to-day -day basis, but if there's a project that demands, you know, the, only thing I can, the only way I can do it is by learning how to uh, create a command for a particular API or um, scrape a particular website, which I haven't, you know, I don't have a lot of experience with Python, but it's something that I've built on depending on the project. And for me, that's very much about what data journalism is about, actually. It's kind of knowing what you can do. And then when you have a project, it's very much goal-oriented. So you're trying to learn a skill just to be able to get this project done, to be able to get a story done. And I find that that's the way I've learned most of the time. So with R, um, I had learned the basics in university but I didn't have to put it into practice until there was a project which I couldn't do without it. Um, so, yeah, I'm learning all the time. And that's part, of the, that's part of the job that I love as well. The data blog under Simon Rogers at The Guardian completely transformed data journalism in Europe. So it kind of really raised the profile. And it really encouraged this idea of information being open and free and reusable. So although you may read a story, you can also query the data yourself and possibly make something out of it in terms of a story or, you know, you can have your own inquisitive nature answered to by using some of the data that's put in the public domain. And that was, that's been incredibly valuable for the data journalism community. 
Um, myself and my colleague Helena Benson at The Guardian, we started under the umbrella of the Data Projects team. And the idea was that was slightly different to the blog, where we would work on longer term investigative work. So the term of the projects would be longer. Um, there wasn't as much of a pressure to have a quick turnaround. And with that, I guess, we tend to do more in-depth work. And quite often, we'll write up methodologies. So we'll explain how we've done the work, where the idea came from, where the data came from, who we spoke to, um, and why particular decisions have been made about presentation. And that allows the reader, A, to have more trust in what we do, and B, to also replicate the work if they want to in some sense. So they should be able to go and replicate what we've done. Um, I think you know, we, we do still look at quicker turnaround work. We do still publish um, things like the, the data blog would have done. But we're also kind of building on what they did within the newsroom and within the data journalism community more broadly to encourage that it's not we're trying to move away from this idea that stories are just numbers or just relating something that's found in the world, you know, relating inf a piece of information that's found out in the real world. We want to build stories around that. We want to be able to tell narratives using data um, and really people draw people into stories because a lot of the data that we're collecting and we're looking at, there are numbers on a, on a screen, but really the story is about how it affects people's real lives, and that's how you make an impact. I think that's how you make people care about the work that we're doing, um, and that's what our focus is at the moment. So I think it's a fantastic idea to have a workshop where you get people from all sorts of disciplines, so be it journalism, civil society, developers, graphic designers, um, people in visuals, to come together and work on a project. And I think the theme of human rights this year is particularly topical especially given what we're seeing, not just across Europe, um, but across the world, looking at places like Syria and Yemen as well, um, which is impacting very much the political landscape in Europe and is something that we should all be concerned about. Um, and unfortunately, I guess the nature of um, human perception is we often become more concerned when it affects our own lives. So it's definitely um, much more in the uh, consciousness, I guess. Uh, in the past year or two. Um, in terms of workshops of this sort, I think having the opportunity to sit together and discuss the problems, um, look at what information we can gather and the best way of telling the story to actually make people engaged with the issues um, and care about the story that we're trying to tell is it's a great opportunity. Um, and it's a big challenge too because although we have seen the problem of um, you know, immigration across Europe and the political fallout of that um, in places like Hungary and France and to some degree the UK um, with the Brexit vote. Um, it's really making the challenge is really to get people to engage with the problem. Um, and I feel like in journalism very often in the day-to-day -day storytelling we fail when it comes to that. You know, we very much are good at getting the information across when it's needed, but engaging with people and making them understand the totality of the problem and care about it, that's a huge challenge. Um, so I really am looking forward to seeing what some of the projects bring together over the next couple of days.